Let's take a closer look at the story now. We are joined by Art Estopanin, a political strategist with nearly three decades of experience in the US Congress, and joining us, Ajay Bhattoria, Deputy National Finance Chair for the Democratic Party and an Asian American community leader. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us this morning. Now, Art, let me come to you first. Some of the families who invited Trump to the gravesite have come out strongly in favor of Trump. They say they invited Trump's team to film and take photographs at that gravesite, but the fact really remains that there are many other military families who say that this should never have happened. This was wrong. It was disrespectful and illegal. You just can't campaign here. Do you think that Trump's campaign got this wrong? No, I don't think so, Alistair. The fact of the matter is what is shameful and what it is unforgivable is that we saw uh, President Biden sleeping in the in, in the beach. Uh, he's been on vacation for two weeks, first in California and now in Delaware. And then uh, Ms. Harris was in her mansion like a few miles away. They are the reason why these 13 young people died because of the batched uh, withdrawal of the U.S. forces in Afghanistan. This was a disaster from President Biden and Harris. And what Trump was doing is he was there because he was invited by the family. The family see President Trump, uh, the, fa the family of these fallen uh, young men and women, see President Trump as the true leader of the United States, the leader that is respected around the world. Harris and, and Biden, unfortunately, are not are not respected. And, and the American people see President Trump as the true leader. Ajay, do you agree with that, that Harris and uh, President Biden didn't do enough to mark the three-year anniversary? Well, I mean, in response to criticism regarding the Afghanistan, it is crucial to focus on the real issues rather than exploiting the death of our 13 brave service members for political attacks. And that's what uh, Trump has been doing, using, uh, you know, the sacred ground for political gain. So, and, so you uh, agree that Biden President Trump, so you agree that President Biden and Ms. Harris acted well in Afghanistan? It was an embarrassment. That is always... Uh, there is always opportunities for improvement in the way it was done, and we are not going back. And that's what Trump always wants to go back. And uh, Biden administration is working to address the complex challenges surrounding the withdrawal and also continuing. But Trump had the chance to withdraw. He did not do it, but President uh, Biden did it. And he, he did. Uh, as Vice President he, he, Kamala Harris he, 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 he had a plan. But sir, he would never have allowed these 13... I'll just give him an opportunity to respond uh, the spike for these sacred spaces. She has personally visited Arlington Cemetery several times and understands the honoring that our veterans should never be used for political gain, as Trump had tried to do that. Not at all. I, I totally disagree with uh, that. Uh, this Alistair. one is for you also now. Uh, Ajay, we'll come to you in, in a second. Uh, uh, now, this is not the first time that families of veterans have criticized Trump, right? There have been a few instances. 2015, Trump dismissed Senator McCain's military record in Vietnam. If you remember, for five years, uh, McCain was held uh, captive as prisoner of war. Trump, at that point, he said, uh, I like people who weren't captured. Then his infamous remark calling Americans who died in war losers and suckers. Trump, of course, has denied that, but his own chief of staff says otherwise. What would you say? These are just not like a few slip-ups, but maybe this is really who Trump is. Alistair, so I understand that the, that the liberal press in the United States has an agenda that they have to follow. And that agenda that is that President Trump is anti-military, uh, but that is totally 100% wrong. The president rebuilt the military, which uh, in just almost four years, has been totally destroyed. Do you know how many naval ships are uh, at, at, uh, at dock because we don't have the military support? That never happened with, when President Trump was president. He also rebuilt all of our equipment, military equipment that President uh, Biden has been given to Ukraine. President Trump is seen by the military and is supported by all kinds of veterans. That is an agenda that is untrue that is promoted by the by the press, unfortunately. The military men and women respect and honor President Trump as the chief because he did not have any wars around the world 
when he was president. Now we see what a disaster we're living. Uh, Ukraine invaded, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine. We see the Middle East. We see Latin America. There are wars everywhere under the Biden-Harris administration. When President Trump is reelected, we're going to see peace in the world once again. Okay, Art and Ajay do stay with us. We just come back to our discussion here, but we want to take a look at the latest survey on how the race is actually shaping out. And ABC Ipsos poll shows that Kamala Harris has a slight lead over Trump. This poll was conducted after the Democratic Convention, which was, of course, held late last month. It shows basically unchanged from before the convention. Uh, question here to Ajay first. Uh, let's look at some of the other things that the survey revealed. For example, the poll showed that a majority feel that Harris is running her campaign well, while fewer feel the same about Trump. Uh, we just spoke about the Arlington Cemetery controversy. So do you think that Trump here has bad advisors? Art, I'll come to you in just a bit, but we'll get this response from Ajay first. Or do you think that the problem really is Trump? who really can't take direction and stay on message. So I just want to uh, conclude that uh, symmetry discussion, saying that Trump had called our, uh, you know, our army and our uh, veterans suckers and losers. And how dare he do that? He cannot do that. He had done it multiple times. It's a shameful act that a commander in chief could, could call our people uh, of army and veterans uh, suckers and losers. That's a shameful thing. Now, coming to the race, Vice President Harris has been running for the future and to turn the page on division of Donald Trump and Americans are energized behind that message. Since Vice President entered the race, she has raised them more than. $500 million, a historic sum. She has, uh, we have over 312 coordinate office with 2,000 coordinate staff in, in the battleground states. And in every battleground state, Republican governors, Republican uh, mayors are coming and joining our campaign and supporting Harris more and more. Vice President Harris holds okay. uh, on the core issues of crime, democracy, abortion, healthcare, gun violence, Congress and Congress on reproductive Congress right and Bush freedom. And Some meanwhile, Trump Democrats is burdened with uh, defending indefensible that's a lie, uh, Project sir. 2025, where he wants to cut down K through 12 education, he wants to do okay. a ban on abortion, and he wants to cut down social security. And he Alistair, wants to can I answer your NATO, question? And he's going to withdraw, surrender our leadership. Okay, Ajay, all points, all points noted. Uh, uh, Art, what do you think? Do you think that uh, the Trump campaign needs a change in strategy here, given that slight edge that Harris has? Look, Alistair, what I believe that President Trump, if I was advising him, what I would tell him is you need to focus on the issues. Focus on how, how much was inflation when President Trump uh, was in office, 1.9. How much was home interest rates when he was in office, 2%. Now we see inflation, they say 3%, 4%. Uh, mortgages are around 6%, 7%. Gas, the ga the price of gas before when President Trump was in office, it was 1.87. Now it's about $4. So focus on the issues. Uh, the United States was much more competitive, was much more stronger when President Trump was in office. And now we see the disaster that we have in the United States under Biden-Harris. We have an open border. We have crime everywhere, poor education, inflation high uh, rental properties, everything is, 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 is uh, a disaster under Harris, uh, Biden. And so that's what I would tell him. I would tell him, focus on the issues. We don't know any of the policies that Ms. Harris wants to implement. She says she wants to create opportunities by creating, uh, by price, uh, elimin eliminating price gouging, whatever that means, that's price control. Price control is a socialism technique that has never worked. President Nixon tried it in the 70s. It didn't work. It will not work now. So Art, on what you said, the poll concurs with you on some points. Trump continues to outperform Harris on key issues like the economy, inflation, immigration. But Art, mm -hmm. when it comes to Physical fitness, now 47% say that Harris is in a much better position as versus <laughs> Trump at 37% physical and mental fitness. So how do you defend that argument? Do you think that Trump has it still in him to take on uh, another term in the White House? 
Absolutely, Alistair. And the only thing we have to do is watch him. Watch him do uh, town hall after town hall, speaking to thousands and thousands of people, interviews. So not because of his age should we believe that he cannot do the job, because we see it on TV. We see it every day, his physical energy. Um, you know, he may be uh, reaching 80, but he, he acts like a man maybe in his 60s, because he is um, in his heart, he has love for this country. In comparison to uh, Mr. Biden, President Biden, that we saw every day in our TV of his decline, of his mental decline, and Vice President Harris said he's ready to go. She lied once again to the American people, saying that he was perfectly fine, when everyone saw with their own eyes that the poor man was just deteriorating. And that's a reality. But in contrast, we see President Trump Strong, okay. vital, energetic guy. Yeah. So right. President Biden has been one of the most transformative president of the in the All right. So history. Ajay, what do you think? Yeah. So President Biden has been one of the most transformative president in the United States history, where he has, uh, you know, uh, from we took the uh, reins to destroy the economy from Trump, uh, and we uh, during the COVID time, and President Biden has the lowest unemployment. So you and like he, high uh, inflation? The highest number of jobs. Okay, Ajay, let's compare. Biden is not in the race anymore. Let's compare Trump to Harris and the age factor. What do you think of that? And I'll, let's get Ajay is to respond. Is there any comparison needs to be done? As well, so let's try and stop is, talking is, over each other. That's okay. Sure. Go ahead. Is there any com comparison needs to be done? We have the oldest candidate who doesn't remember names, uh, Donald Trump, who doesn't remember. He's uh -huh. a low energy guy and he's losing everywhere. And his and his uh, campaign polls shows that he's behind. And his own uh, Republican friends are, you know, get, getting behind uh, Kamala Harris. And on the Kamala Harris is leading on the issues. She's ready to turn the page to, for a new way forward. Where she's talked about her economic plan, where she's going to create uh, give incentives for housing to millions of American for first-time house buyers for, for credit for child credit credit and she's going to create uh, you know uh, control on the price she's going to lead us uh, for better relations in the worldwide I mean and so she's the right candidate even though she is she is a very strong we consider ourselves underdogs and we are working hard the next 65 days we continue to work hard we continue to organize we continue to mobilize and we continue to get out each and every vote we can to defeat Donald Trump Alistair, if I may okay. respond, please, because right, the, the uh, problem now, is that of... we, we don't have money. We don't have the United States has thirty five trillion dollar in deficit. Where's this money going to come from? Is it going to come that from the heavens? No, it's going to come from our taxpayers. The American taxpayers don't want to continue to give all these free programs to illegal immigrants. We have 10 to 15 million illegal immigrants that are receiving free housing, free medical care, free uh, uh, all kinds of benefits uh, that, that Biden and Harris have created. Enough already. The United States cannot continue to create and pump more money because it's going to bankrupt this country. And this is the fault of Harris and, 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 uh, and, okay, and Biden. All this inflation is just un, un, unacceptable. Just enough time for one last question now. Um, Two-thirds of Americans in that poll felt that Trump would be unprepared to accept the election result. This, of course, is no good. It worries a lot of people. No one wants to see the chaos of January 6th again. Uh, this question is to you because you are a Republican supporter. How worried mm -hmm. should we be about a repeat of what happened on January 6th? Well, Alistair, the problem, the main problem is that if the if illegal immigrants start to vote and if the American people see of electoral irregularities like we saw in November of 2020, where half of the country did not accept the uh, election of President Biden because we saw of the, all of the different irregularities in Nevada and Arizona and Pennsylvania and Georgia in all of the key states. President Trump was winning big numbers. And at midnight, I was on TV commenting. At midnight, they said, we're going to stop the counting. And then at 4 a.m., when they started counting again, President Biden was named president. That doesn't happen in the, that has never happened in the United States. It happens in banana republics. So if the American people feel that this election was stolen, January the 6th is uh, that protest that happened 
It's going to happen all over the United States because the American people have never had, we've never had a civil war okay. because the elections are respected. We need to respect the elections and the elections count. If, Pres if Vice President Harris wins fair and square, fine, no problem. But the problem right. is that if they try to steal the election, it's going to be a problem. Andre, very quickly, 15 seconds, wrap up, yeah. please. Do you think, are you worried about a repeat of January 6th? Of course we are worried, I mean, because it's a shame that even today, uh, uh, my, uh, my fellow panelist is not able to accept the elections of 2020. Where, and in the US, we have most fair elections which following the rule of the law. And uh, and uh, Trump is not accept, uh, able to accept his defeat. And uh, I'm sure he will not able to be accept his defeat in 2020, okay. 2024. So uh, he will do whatever he can, but uh, the law will take action. Win. And uh, our, uh, our, uh, our you know, officers and uh, everything is there. So uh, we are looking to turn the page and uh, leave behind the divisiveness of Trump and the country is willing to moving forward okay. with Kamala Harris for a better future for all. Thank you so much, gentlemen, political strategist, art historian, joining us there, and Ajay Bhattoria with the Democratic Party.